Mac, Surface, XPS, gaming laptops, and even something brand new into the mix, Windows ARM laptops that don't suck. Yeah, this is going to be a big year for laptops. This is Luke with Digital Trends, and lately there's been a lot of talk about why PCs are gonna make a big comeback this year after the big swing down in PC sales in 2023. Of course, a lot of that talk has been driven by AI and all that kind of nonsense, but today I wanna to talk about the actual exciting new laptops that are supposedly coming this year. From what I already saw at CES, and according to the latest reporting, we have a pretty good idea of what's coming, so let's talk about it. I'm gonna start with a laptop I've already seen in person and am excited to try out more, but it's definitely controversial. And of course, I'm talking about the new Dell XPS 14. Now, based on the comments in my video, which runs through the entire revamp of the XPS lineup that you should definitely check out, not a lot of people are feeling this new design, and that's totally fair. Everyone's upset about the seamless haptic trackpad and the capacitive touch buttons that get rid of the function row of keys, and for the most part, I can agree with these complaints. But I'd be lying if I said the look of this laptop isn't striking, and I'm very curious about its performance when you configure it with an RTX 4050. Feels like a pretty decent MacBook Pro 14 competitor to me, though maybe not the best one. I'll get back to that later. And please note that when I say I'm excited about the XPS 14, I'm saying that model specifically because I still think the XPS 16 feels like kind of a non-starter as a larger content creation device. But when it comes to the 14 inch model, I can be more forgivable about some of those design changes, especially since we're getting a faster 120 hertz screen and a considerably smaller chassis compared to the XPS 15. But before I get into too much hot water for actually being excited about this thing, let's move on to the world of MacBooks. So obviously a lot of what I'm about to say comes from reporting coming from people like Mark German, but it seems pretty clear at this point that we're going to get updates to the MacBook Air this spring at some kind of launch event alongside some new iPads. In lieu of releasing the M3 update last fall for the MacBook Air, it looks like Apple will be lining up an M3 update to the 13-inch and 15-inch MacBook Air at the same time alongside those new iPad Pros, which is the first time they've done something like that. It's also expected that the M1 MacBook Air will be finally cut out from the lineup officially, leaving Apple with a simpler lineup, unless Apple does something crazy like continue to sell the M2 MacBook Air. We'll have to see, but this will likely be the only MacBook launch of the year, which is kind of crazy to think about. As of now, reporting is pointing to the launch of the M4 chip being saved for 2025, which will be built on the two nanometer TSMC chips, which is likely when the MacBook Pros will eventually get updated. So it's really just these MacBook Airs this year. Now, these M3 MacBook Airs won't have much else in terms of an update. The design isn't gonna change. After all, the 15-inch model came out just last summer. But really, graphics will be the biggest update to these devices. And I just don't know that that's going to make a big change for the average person. Although, if you are coming from an aging M1 MacBook Air that's a few years old, it might make for a decent upgrade. The next one I want to talk about is the 14-inch MacBook Pro competitor that I think everyone is sleeping on, and that is the Asus ROG Zephyrus G14. This is another laptop that we got to see in person at CES just a few weeks ago, which I can't believe that was a few weeks ago. But this is my most anticipated gaming laptop of the year, and it's the one Windows laptop that I think is the most competitive with something like a 14-inch M3 Max MacBook Pro. It's gotten a complete redesign this year with a clear eye towards making this more of a crossover hybrid laptop than it already was. And by that, I mean it's a laptop that looks a lot like a mainstream consumer laptop that just so happens to be a powerful gaming laptop too. Like if you go check out their website, it's being sold for creativity and productivity just as much as for gaming. And I, for one, totally buy it. It still has the flashes of the ROG gaming style, whether that's the new slash bar of light on the lid or even just the font on the keycaps. But now you're also getting a thinner chassis that's very close to as thin and it's actually lighter than the 14 inch MacBook Pro. It also has a widened enlarged touchpad that looks fantastic, larger keycaps and a brighter white color option. It's not just style changes though this year. It also comes with options for up to a 500 nit OLED 120 Hertz display and an RTX 4070 with a 90 watt TGP. 
All those design changes are also coming to the larger 16 inch model, the G16. And that one comes with up to a 240 Hertz display and an RTX 4090. Obviously all this needs to be tested and reviewed, but this is definitely one of the laptops I'm most excited to review when it comes out later this year. Next up is a pair of devices that have been a long time coming, and I'm talking about the Surface Pro 10 and the Surface Laptop 6. Now, the Surface Pro 9 came out way back in October of 2022, so it's been a while since we've heard anything about Microsoft's flagship 2-in-1. And to be fair, they did lose the head of Surface and Windows last fall, Panos Panay, but the recent reporting from Windows Central is pointing to two releases coming, actually, for both these lines, the Surface Pro and the Surface Laptop, this year. So first, there is reportedly going to be a more conventional commercial launch in the spring, which will be named the Surface Pro 9 Plus and Surface Laptop 5 Plus if Microsoft follows the previous naming scheme that they've done in the past. But the real exciting stuff is supposedly coming in late spring or early summer, and that is the actual Surface Pro 10 and Surface Laptop 6. And even though we're not expecting radical new designs here, we do know that they'll be lined up with both the launch of a new AI-focused Windows update, maybe called Windows 12 or maybe not, as well as the launch pad for the new ARM-based Qualcomm chips. And guys, this is where things get really interesting. These new Snapdragon X Elite chips may end up being a huge deal, and the rumor now is that they will be the exclusive chip options for both the Surface Pro 10 and the Surface Laptop 6, aiming to match the performance and battery life of modern MacBooks. In fact, Qualcomm has stated that its chips are 21% faster than the M3, and I know those claims are still just that, claims, but it's enough to get me excited. Because when you stop and think about it, this could end up being Microsoft's big, arm transition moment, just like Apple had back in 2020. And if it's backed up by support on the app ecosystem side of things, it could be huge. We already know that pretty much every major laptop manufacturer is on board too, including Dell, Lenovo, HP, Asus, and Samsung, but it's feeling like these two new Surface devices could be the ones to kick things off, and that's really exciting. Lastly, I wanna end up with one more laptop that I again saw at CES that really got me excited. And we actually gave this a best of CES award and that's the Lenovo ThinkBook Plus Hybrid. This was a two-in-one with a very unique premise. On one level, it's a Lenovo Windows laptop like any other, but then you yank up on the screen and you can pull off the 14 inch screen to be used as a tablet not unlike the old Surface Book devices from back in the day. The difference here though, is that this tablet has a full version of Android running on it. And the benefit of course, is that Android is a much more intuitive, touch only operating system than Windows 11 currently is. And it has a large ecosystem of Android apps, again, at least compared to Windows. Beyond that, this little device has a few secret tricks up its sleeve, such as being able to share files between the two systems, run Android in a window while running Windows, and even run the entire laptop as an Android laptop. Now there's a lot I wanna test out with this very unique product, but of all the more experimental designs to be announced this year so far, this one feels like the most functionally practical to me, one that I could actually see myself loving to use. So I'm really excited when this one comes out, supposedly in the second quarter of this year. That's my list of my most anticipated laptops of the year so far. But now it's time for you to chime in. Which are you most excited for? Leave me a comment down below. And if you enjoyed this video, go ahead and leave me a like too. While you're at it, subscribe to the channel for more. Thanks for watching.